And I think I'm, I'm going to get started since it's seven after. I'm going to um, share my screen. I don't know what this is doing. Oh boy. Okay. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. I want to thank you all for joining this call tonight. And I also want to thank our panelists for their time. We have two interpreters this evening that will be switching off at 15 minute, minute intervals to translate. So I want to thank them as well. I'm going to ask you all to please hold questions and comments until the end of the presentation. We have made time for Q&A and a discussion. So you can either put questions into the chat or you can raise your hand. And it's in the reaction section and you will be unmuted so that you can share. And then lastly, we have a survey coming to you in the email, in an email. Um, if you're able to fill that out and send it back, I would really appreciate it. All right, so to begin, I want to share a bit of information with you about the Parent Information Center of Delaware, for those of you that are not so familiar with it. PIC is a 501c3 statewide organization with a mission to advance effective parent engagement in education and is specifically focused on supporting families of children with disabilities from, age, from birth to age 26. So PIC provides families with the information, education, and advocacy tools necessary to understand public education policies and program options. And most importantly, PIC empowers parents to become their child's best advocate. So there are some different vehicles of support. One-to-one um, -one consultations um, par for parents and caregivers to give information and skills to ensure that their children receive free and appropriate special education services. Now these services are guaranteed to them under Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, IDEA, which is a law that makes available a free, a free appropriate public education to eligible children with disabilities throughout the nation and ensures special education and related services to these children. So there's learning opportunities. Recording. Oops, sorry about that. There's learning opportunities such as trainings, um, audio conferences, there's annual education, all to build awareness and advocacy skills for parents and caregivers. And then our online resources, our PIC website um, can be viewed in a variety of different languages for those that need it. You'll get weekly e-newsletters that connect um, very important information to caregivers, families, professionals um, with information such as these events, learning communities, webinars. Um, you'll all find them in there. And of course, the PIC website, picofdell.org, you can find all of this information there. Um, outreach to families, of course, is really important to make sure that they're getting all the supports that they need for their children. And then system advocacy, which ensures that these children with special needs are not only considered locally, but at the national levels. And then here you'll see um, there's parent and youth training, everything from advocacy to the law, to communication, IEP, IFSPs. Um, it's all laid out there. And for anybody who might have um, a deaf plus um, child, there are people within PIC that can not only help with hearing loss, but can, he can help with other situations as well. And that brings it to me. I am the newly hired family resource specialist with early hearing detection and intervention for Parent Information Center of Delaware, which is a mouthful. Um, but I uh, live with my husband and my two daughters, Michaela and Maddie, who are nine and six years old, respectively. 
Um, so this, this position really means a lot to me because I, of my daughter, Maddie, who was born profoundly deaf, uh, we didn't know at birth um, because she did pass her newborn screening. But when she was about a year and a half and she wasn't babbling or making the sounds that generally children do make, we um, dug deeper into it and found out how severe her hearing loss actually was. And then at 22 months of age, she underwent cochlear implant surgery at the Morris Hospital for Children. So I wanna share with you a couple of the services that Delaware provides and then kind of circle back to how this impacted um, our family and my daughter, Maddie. Um, because these supports and these systems that Delaware provides is really important um, to helping families be successful. So Childhood Development Watch, which uh, Fiona, who is our next panelist, panelist, will get more into detail with, but it is a statewide early intervention program for children ages birth to three. And now what they do is they help families with infants and toddlers who have a disability or a developmental delay. And they're a support system for this family in meeting those needs. And it really depends on what, what your child's need is. As you can see, services include screening and evaluations, um, speech language therapy, occupational therapy, depending on your child's needs, um, that is what will be provided. And then we'll go to um, family education. Um, it is a service that is provided in all three counties of Delaware. There's Delaware School for the Deaf, um, which actually goes up to um, 12th grade. Um, listening and spoken language is more of a birth to three. Um, the Delaware School for the Deaf Family Educator is a certified teacher of the deaf uh, with, that specializes in sign language education as well as oral education. And then the Christina Early Education Center offers listening and spoken language programs, but specifically for families who are interested in spoken language. They do not teach ASL. And now both of these services were in-home services um, prior to COVID. I'm not 100% sure what they are doing now. I believe that listening and spoken language does provide in-home services still, but if you want any information, any more information, I would be happy to look into it for you. So you can just shoot me a note and I will do that for you. So now to circle back to my family, um, Maddie worked with Childhood Development Watch. Once she was diagnosed, they connected with us. And from there, they um, came to our home and we figured out what Maddie's needs were we decided that we were gonna work with Delaware School for the Deaf um, to learn sign language prior to Maddie's surgery because she did not have any communication um, and we wanted to be able to talk to her. So we learned sign language. Once she had her cochlear implant surgery, we switched to spoken language so that she could work on receptive and expressive language. And from there, Maddie spent ages three to five attending the LSL program and then transfer to mainstream kindergarten where she currently attends first grade. So as your family resource specialist, I provide education, training, guidance, and advocacy for parents and caregivers of children diagnosed with hearing loss. And from this, I will host bi-monthly learning communities that are not only for parents and caregivers, but for professionals as well. There will be increased engagement and outreach to families because of course that's super important to make sure that families are getting all those supports that they need. And then partnerships with districts and schools, state agencies and healthcare providers, because I wanna know what they're doing, they wanna know what I'm doing. So it's good to be on the same page. And of course, my ultimate goal is to give parents and caregivers all the tools they need to provide a successful outcome for their children. And I will say that success looks very different for every single child. So whatever the goal is for your child is mine as well. It doesn't have to be the same for everyone and it shouldn't be. So our learning communities after today, or tonight I should say, um, we have one coming up in June. So I guess uh, after June will be our bi-monthly uh, learning communities, but we have one on congenital CMV awareness. Um, Dr. Kathy Riley, who's an educational audiologist, is going to speak about 
congenital CMV, which is a virus that affects most people at the age of 40 years old, but most do not have health effects from it. But when a pregnant mom is carrying a baby and the virus happens to go through the placenta to the baby, it can cause them to have congenital CMV. Um, about 4,000 babies a year get that, and they do have health effects because of it. Um, one is hearing loss, and it's actually the main cause of non-inherited sensory neural hearing loss um, in children. So that is a super important topic, and I hope you guys can join for that as well. Um, and then you'll see August, advocating for your child, October, talking with your child's school or child care provider, um, and then December, Delaware's birth mandate. And then my information, amoris at pell.org. I hope that you will reach out to me if you have any questions or you have um, any needs for support. I, I really am excited to work with any and all of you. And then now I am going to introduce you to Fiona Bivar, who is um, with the Delaware Department of Education. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a moment so that Fiona can, and I will be back momentarily. momentarily so thank you. All right, Fiona, thank you. Yeah, okay, so I'll um, share my screen. And let me know once you can see that. Okay, I, I'm, and I apologize, I think I skipped a, the original opening screen. So um, thank you, Ariel, for inviting me. So um, yes, yeah, so I'm Fiona Vivar. I do work for the Department of Education out of the Office of Early Learning. Um, part of my responsibility is supporting Child Development Watch. Um, in fact, I was a service, I served as a service coordinator for a few years. Um, as part of my role. So I worked with families and children and uh, did all the work in Child Development Watch, but I don't do that any longer, but I still help support the family service coordinators. Um, and uh, Ariel mentioned birth mandate, which I'll kind of mention as part of my, um, my presentation. So um, Ariel asked me to speak on um, early intervention services. And so to begin with, you know, we do have the newborn screening here in Delaware. And, um, you know, um, Ariel also mentioned Eddie, the early hearing detection and intervention. Uh, we do have um, a board here in the state of Delaware and um, each state does have um, a group to um, then monitor the newborn hearing screening. So, um, you know, it was authorized in 2000 and uh, so that each state has an EDI program and have newborn hearing screenings. And what is recommended is to follow 136, meaning um, children would be screened by the first month of age um, have a diagnostic, uh, be diagnosed by three months of age, and to receive early intervention by six months of age. And, you know, those are recommended in order to identify children as soon as possible and start early intervention. Okay. And so, um, you know, we do meet, um, uh, it is an open meeting, um, and um, I attend as a, as a, um, a member, not, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not a voting member, but I send as a um, community member. And um, hearing services are something that we monitor here in the state of Delaware. So uh, moving forward. Okay, so <clears throat> what happens once a child is screened and a family moves forward with a diagnostic and is identified, what happens is they are then referred, let's say a child is um, identified at AI, for example, at AI DuPont, that child is then referred to public health um, <clears throat> newborn hearing screening program, their EDI program, and that child, that family is then referred to Child Development Watch to then work on receiving early intervention services. So there are two offices. Um, I mean, it is a birth to three program here in Delaware and work out of two programs, um, in, one in Newcastle County and one in Milford. Um, 
Anyone can make a referral and they do service children from uh, birth until they turn three, at which time then we work on transitioning children into the public schools should a child be eligible for services. Okay, so what happens is a family would be referred, you're um, assigned a family service coordinator. If a child has an identified um, um, hearing need, uh, you are eligible for services already. Um, that's known as uh, established condition uh, in Child Development Watch. And uh, family, your family service coordinator would talk to you, of course, about the program and get consents and all of that. But then you start working under an individual family service plan, what we call an IFSP. And so all your services would go through that and, of course, work with you as a family. One thing that's key with, with that is that um, you know, a family works with a service coordinator to develop outcomes to then work on uh, your child's needs and also as a family. And so if a child is coming in, uh, a family's coming in with a child who has a hearing need, then uh, that family service coordinator, coordinator will talk to them about services within Child Development Watch. <clears throat> but just also understand that it's that um, Child Development Watch services all children who present with a delay. So if anyone has a concern about their child, a referral can be made to Child Development Watch and know that you don't need to wait for a physician's referral, okay? But since we're speaking specifically about children with hearing needs, then that's what I'm going to focus on. Okay, once a family is in Child Development Watch, the service coordinator can also talk to the family about making a referral to your local LEA, which is your local education agency, which is your local school district. And so um, the school district is then responsible for determining eligibility for those services. So a family is receiving services through Child Development Watch, but because we consider um, Ariel had mentioned birth mandate. In the state of Delaware, a child who is identified deaf, hard of hearing is one of the four birth mandates, meaning Department of Education provides services from birth through age 21, should a family uh, want to continue and pursue those services, okay? So that then allows the family service coordinator to make a referral for that family with their consent to the local school, to your local school district. The school district, then you, the family service coordinator then works with the school district to have a meeting, which we call an information sharing meeting. So the school district representative can talk about the eligibility process and what potential services may be available through the school district to address the hearing needs. The school district then determines eligibility to then access those services. And then, um, you know, the family has a choice to receive those services through an IEP or continue with their IFSP. Um, an IEP is through the school district, which is your individual education program. And if you continue to receive services, uh, special education services through the school district, then you work out of the individual education program. Um, and as I had mentioned earlier, through Child Development Watch, the Birth to Three program, you work through an individual family service program. Major difference between the two is that um, in an IEP, the goals are developed to, to work on a child's educational need and how those needs impact their education. So how does the hearing need then impact a child's, child's learning and ability to, act, ability to access the, the curriculum, okay? So once a family agrees to move forward with a school district, you go through this process, and then those are additional services that are added. So you can actually get services from Child Development Watch and your local school district together. However, you can only work through either an IEP or an IFSP, not both. So um, this is just my contact information. Jerry Turner is my partner who works through the state as well. Um, so right now, I think that's, um, that's my portion of um, services. And um, I just wanted to add though, transitioning, when we transition, I'm sorry, let me stop sharing that. Um, 
one thing we do also aside from once you get services through the school district is then work with the family to transition them into your local school district once the child is turning three years old. So part of that is, you know, uh, when we're saying earlier that Child Development Watch works with birth to three, that eventually ends when that child turns three. So then part of the work that a family service coordinator does is work on transitioning you into the public school um, to continue with services. And so um, school districts do have preschool programs to then help continue support, support children under um, from three to five. Okay. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you. Great. And next up, um, we have Mindy Failing, the Delaware Statewide Programs Coordinator for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. So thank you so much, Mindy. I'm going to turn it to you. Presentation, I'm actually going to be using uh, two different hats. Uh, my first hat that I'll be using is focusing more on um, their early intervention services. I am uh, in charge of the early intervention program. And before I explain a little bit about that, uh, let me let you know a little bit about my background. I actually was uh, born and raised here in Delaware. My parents are hearing. My whole family is hearing. And I am very thankful for the early intervention services that my parents received um, here in Delaware. We got uh, support and they were able to support me when I was uh, from birth until, you know, when I got older. And I can't imagine uh, a lot of parents, there are 80% of parents who are hearing, who have children who have hearing loss and they don't know what to do with their deaf and hard of hearing child. And I am one of uh, the successful outcomes, you could say. And I also want to explain that I am just one of many different kinds of deaf and hard of hearing individuals out there. I am completely deaf. I hear absolutely nothing. And in my time when I was uh, growing up, technology wasn't as advanced as it is that we have now. So the tools that we had then compared to now um, were obviously uh, not available. The technology we have now for deaf and hard of hearing access is, is amazing. Um, but my family at that time made the decision to use sign language and to use visual communication to communicate. And that was our choice. But I also wanna let you know that I'm very supportive of any parents and whatever their choices are. Our job, one of the hats that I work work with, with the families is to support them and give them the information and also to support them with whatever their choice is and give them the tools and the resources that they need. For example, um, in this group, we have a lot of different resources. We have a child Deve development watch. We have hands and voices. We have also um, the statewide program for the deaf and hard of hearing that I'm involved with. And so Delaware has a lot of resources and we all work together to support the parents and their deaf and hard of hearing child. One of the hats that I um, wear is also not only the early intervention, but I'm also an educational specialist. And that is through the CDW, uh, the, CDW excuse me, the Child Development Watch program. And so we share information with the families and then the families can use that information and make the choices um, to use our services or not. And just like Ariel um, kind of explained, that's um, what we do. The fam we are our family educational specialist with um, the early childhood program and also the, the um, hearing and speech center as well. And both of us, uh, both of them, we provide services to families. And we provide those services in home up until from birth until three. And if they want to continue with an IFSP, then it would end at three. And if any of the families have any questions about either one of those programs, whether it be deaf or uh, student child development watch, um, you can go to our um, website, but we also, um, you're welcome to 
um, go to any of our informational meetings if you would like that any more information about those programs. And you can change your, your decision or your choice at any time from birth until three. So you will have access to either one of those programs and all the full services until your child turns three. So that is one of the hats that I wear. The other hat that I wear is um, we also have resources available for people who um, from three, I am also a deaf mentor. And uh, the deaf mentor program that I am involved in is actually funded by the EDI. And the EDI program is, is different from their early intervention specialist hat that I wear. Um, this deaf mentorship program through EDI is completely free. You can be referred through hands and voices. And this deaf mentor program, what we, I believe we currently have nine deaf mentors. And there are many families, like, like I said before, 90% uh, of parents who have a child who is born deaf or hard of hearing, uh, many of those parents have never met an, a deaf or hard of hearing adult. And so many parents and families don't know what to do with their deaf and hear, hard of hearing child. And so what we do is we provide deaf mentorship um, opportunities if you wanna meet with a deaf mentor, um, somebody who has you know, a similar hearing loss as your child. Like I said, we have deaf, nine deaf mentors currently right now and their range of hearing loss differs. Um, some of them have cochlear implants, some of them have hearing through one ear, some of them lose hearing aids. We all have different levels of hearing loss. Some sign, some prefer spoken English. So it's just a, a variety of hearing levels that we have. And all of our, the, deaf, the nine deaf mentors are deaf or hard of hearing and um, our successful outcomes of what your child could become. And so the meeting that you would have with a deaf um, mentor, you could decide to have that on a weekly basis or it could be a monthly basis. And it is very informal. It's more of an, a time to be able to interact with the parents. The parents are able to ask any of their questions to the deaf mentor that they ha had, whether it's about you know, their upbringing or their interaction, uh, communicating with families, their educational experience, just their living in, in the house and the community, any accommodations, what are the different things that um, could happen inside the house, you know, of that they experience. And this is a time for the deaf mentor to give that information, their experience to the parents and just um, help the parents know how to support not only the family, but their child as well. The deaf mentor program is actually still relatively new. We are only in our second year with the program. So if you are interested in looking for a deaf mentor for your family, um, again, right now it is only from birth to three. We do have some um, exceptions up until when your child is five, it would depend on the family. But if you are interested, you can definitely contact us through Hands and Voices, or you can contact me directly. Thank you. I, I don't know if there's any questions or comments about the Deaf Mentor Program. Mindy, we're gonna take um, questions at the end of the pre presentation and then I'll direct them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again. Um, and I'm going to hand it over to Claire, sorry. Okay. Hey, thanks. <clears throat> yeah, so my name is Claire Kinsavage. Um, I am the um, parent guide um, program, no, I am not the parent guide, uh, guide by side program coordinator. We have um, Angie Miller is actually the um, chapter board president or chair of uh, Delaware Hands and Voices. And um, so we are a parent-to-parent -parent support group uh, here in Delaware. And um, we are, all of us guides uh, are parents of 
children that are deaf and hard of hearing. So I have a 14 year old. Uh, I have a 17 and a 14 year old and I have a 14 year old that um, was born with hearing loss. And um, it kind of, it threw me into a world uh, that I didn't know existed. And I'm very happy um, to have found it here in Delaware, especially. And I think that's why I decided to become um, a guide for Hands and Voices. Um, we had a great experience um, with Delaware and with all the supports that are offered. And I wanted to help, you know, help other parents of newly diagnosed children um, kind of navigate and find their own way and their own journey. Um, and that's very much what Hands and Voices is about. Um, Hands and Voices is a, it's actually an international um, organization, nonprofit. Um, we have this chapter here in Delaware and we have for quite some time now, um, it might be going on 14 years um, here in Delaware. And um, we, uh, the, basically the, the, the mission statement, as you can see here, um, is basically supporting our deaf and hard of hearing um, families that have children that are deaf or hard of hearing. Um, without any bias around communication modes that they might choose. Um, with the, the organization um, back in the 1990s, uh, that was when it was created because they were seeing this strife between um, and this biasness against uh, between different modes of communication. So basically Hands of Voices was created to support families in however they choose um, to uh, communicate in communication. And um, the motto is what works for your child is what makes the choice right. And um, so we have, um, I can't remember what's on our next slide, Ariel. Let's, let's see. Yeah, there we go. So um, we have uh, guides throughout the, the state of Delaware. Um, and we try to bring a social component because oftentimes uh, children might be the only ones if they're in mainstream school that have uh, hearing loss or are deaf or wear hearing aids or you know wherever. So we try to bring the social component to our small state um, through connections with other parents. Um, we, our big goal is to empower just as PIC does empower um, and kind of inform um, our parents that have kids that are newly diagnosed to, um, you know, learn how to advocate and learn what they kind of need to learn and, um, and kind of support them on their journey. Um, we have guides that we can assign to families and it's um, guides that are there to support uh, um, provide emotional support, uh, information, resources, sometimes just connections, person to talk to, shoulder to lean on. Um, we're really just here as a fellow parent um, to um, support other parents and in any way that we can. Um, we do provide, here's our brochure, and we um, provide any parent that is interested um, in um, a book of choice. This is a, something that the National um, Hands of Voices puts out for us. And it's a great book that supports her parents. Um, and it's kind of full of, you know, terminology. Um, uh, it has, uh, you know, just different stories about different children and their children, families and their experiences. Um, just kind of a good overall thing. And then um, the other thing that Hands of Voices, the national, and if you get on our mailing list, you can get a communication, communicator, they call it. So it's just a quarterly news um, newspaper that they put out and um, just has all sorts of different information um, from across the nation, actually across the world, I guess it would be. Um, so that's called the communicator. So basically Hands of Voices is this chapter that we have here in Delaware. It's free to join. If you would like to um, give us email, we have a 
awesome um, newsletter that comes out for our Delaware local chapter. And um, we have resources, we can assign a guide to be involved in, in you know, texting or email or phone conversations or meeting up in person, however you feel comfortable. Um, if, if you just wanted a fellow parent to have the number to reach out in case you ever come up with the questions, you know, it's always nice to have that. Um, we have community and social events too. So that's a great um, thing to look out for on our website and on our, um, um, our newsletter that we put out um, via email. And um, I can put this in the chat, but uh, Delaware Hands and, Vo Delaware Hands and Voices um, dot com is our um, our website, and um, if you wanted to find any, uh, the national website is just tele, uh, handsandvoices dot org, um, and it's full of all sorts of resources. Um, we, as a um, our organization here, actually partners with the um, Delaware um, Health and Human Services. Uh, we are their partner and with um, actually getting referrals from them of children that have um, failed their newborn hearing screenings. And that way we can get those children um, and the number of the, their, their numbers and reach out to their families and uh, kind of just give them an overall of, hey, this is, these are the services we can provide. Um, and because, uh, um, as Mindy said, you know, a lot of these, uh, a, a lot of the parents are hearing and come from a family where they don't have any um, interaction, you know, didn't know any deaf, uh, deaf people growing up. That was my case. Um, so it's just kind of nice to be able to reach out and to hear from another parent that um, kind of has gone, gone through it. Um, the studies show that it's you know parent to parent support is is really important and um and we're kind of easy and accessible too so um so we also do uh work along with eddie um and um participate in their their um their meetings and and support them and they support us um do and that's like I said, it all kind of works together with the um, health department and and um, Eddie, the our early detection and and intervention stuff. Um, so um, I think that was what I wanted to mention. That's it. Thank you, Claire. Yeah, and I and I also want to say that. Um, Maddie, and when, when we were diagnosed, when Maddie was diagnosed, um, Hands and Voices reached out to me and I was very grateful for them because they were able to put me in touch with somebody who um, had a son with cochlear implants. So I was able to talk to another parent and kind of ask questions. So they were another great resource um, for my daughter and for our family. Um, so now I'm going to ask if anybody has any questions. Um, if you want to put them into the chat, I can read them out. Um, Kathy wrote, it sounds like a wonderful program, the Deaf Mentorship. Ariel, you know, I wanted to say, I feel like I forgot to mention um, enough about Child Development Watch. So if anybody had a question about Child Development Watch and their services, I'll be happy to answer uh, or give more information about it. Yeah. And I, I'm just realizing like that I have to say, you know, the deaf mentorship is wonderful. We're so grateful to have that in our state now. Um, it's been a long time coming and, um, and yes, please, you know, Mindy 
reach out to her directly or us. We will get you in touch with them. It's, it's wonderful to have that resource. Anybody else? Um, I was just reading the, the, the interconnectedness of uh, the services and it's kind of nice when you have a, a small state and, you know, a small population of, you know, deaf and hard of hearing people. We, I, I know all these people and we've worked alongside each other and it's, it's very, it yeah. is very good. Yeah. It's wonderful. Okay. So we actually, we do have two questions. I'm curious what law or laws does Child Development Watch fall under? Um, IDEA is a question that was. Yeah, um, it does. I'm sorry, exactly what is the question? Yeah, um, it is under IDEA. It's part of IDEA. It's, um, you typically hear it as part C. So it's part C of IDEA. So it allows, um, um, service early intervention services. So studies have already proven that providing early intervention services for children um, birth to three really um, helps. And, you know, uh, Child Development Watch provides services for all children. So if anyone has any questions um, or concerns about their child who may be delayed, maybe your child is two and maybe not speaking enough, or your child is, um, you know, 18 months old and not crawling as you expect, a child, you'll make a referral. Um, and um, as I said, a family service coordinator would be assigned, your child would get evaluated to determine if uh, a child is eligible for the services. So your, a child still has to be evaluated to determine if there is a delay in any area. So they're, um, you know, they look at um, cognitive uh, communication, um, uh, gross and fine motor skills. And so, you know, those are, that's where it falls under. Oh, you have any other questions? So I have a question too about Child Development Watch. I was just wondering if kids coming in from out of state, um, how does that work? Um, well, each state has an early intervention program. So our Child Development Watch services children uh, and families who live in Delaware. So if they're moving in, then of course they'll get service. Um, and if a child was receiving early intervention services from another state, then they can bring their IFSP um, into um, Child Development Watch and then you would uh, you know, continue your services. So um, yeah. So each state does have an early intervention program that, you know, they're all called differently and also under a, a, maybe a different agency, but. And they can self-refer or. Yeah. yeah, you can self-refer. You don't have to wait for a pediatrician. Um, that's sort of uh, something a lot of people feel that they have to wait for their, their doctor, but um, anybody, um, you know, if your neighbor has a concern, you know, you can refer them, they can refer themselves, call Child Development Watch and make a referral. So, um, you know, let it be known that if anybody has a concern about their child who may be delayed um, in an area can make, can make um, a referral. Hey, Fiona, um, another question. Oh, Mindy, did you, did you have anything? No? Okay. Um, what might, what support might a young adult need since it was mentioned that hearing impaired people up to age 26 can receive services? Um, I, I can say from department of Ed, from school point of view, um, services are provided through 20, through until age 21. Uh, a child, a uh, young adult can receive services until you're 21. That's where, spe that's special education in general. So um, services for a child who is deaf, hard of hearing and has an IEP and a family chooses to continue, it is until 21. I don't know about um, age 26. Um, and somebody else may have mentioned that. Yes, uh, PIC offers those services um, until 20. Oh, Mindy, go ahead. Mindy.
that I have about the outreach services um, for the with, in regard to the school departments. Some of the older students that have been identified latent um, with hearing loss, there are some apart departments, excuse me, that have teachers of the deaf and some departments um, do not, or some districts do not, some districts do. Um, it is a statewide outreach services um, that work with the districts and to educate the parents as well. And so we work um, with them who, some people who might have been identified latent um, as hearing loss. So they might not be under the CDW program because like I said, that age is out at three, but there are other programs out there. And if you have any questions um, for anybody who is over the age of um, three, you can definitely reach out to any of our team and we can um, talk to you about uh, which school district is in your area. Thank you. Um, those were the questions I received. Is there any other questions before we, we say, say goodbye? Yeah, I can just make a comment. I just also wanted to add um, that I know that sometimes um, people react differently when they have a child who has a hearing loss and uh, you know you don't know if their future is going to be great but again please use the early intervention services take advantage of those services as they're young because their cognitive ability you know there is, is growing and they're still learning and the more they can get um, involved in these services now the better their future will be and there's a lot of people all over the state that are ready to support you and your family and your child. And, and also, I just wanted to add um, one other important, one other important point, but I completely lost it right now. It'll come back to me, I'm sure. Actually, um, Mindy, we do have another question for you. Um, Regarding the deaf mentor program, uh, you mentioned it's free. So are the nine mentor volunteers? Just curious. Yes, the program is free. And um, to answer your question, the deaf mentor program is free for families. And you don't have to go through the school district. You don't have to go through the child of development watch. Um, it's uh, through hands and voices, it is free. And it's um, just like guide by your side is free. So you can contact hands and voices directly through me. And then I can get you set up with a mentor um, with your family and then get that process started. Um, I can't answer the second part of the question for Mindy, but I know for our guides, just if, if they're curious, we do, um, our guides are paid guides. Um, they're paid for their time. Um, a lot of times they end up doing a lot of volunteer work anyway, but, um, but yeah, they, they are trained and paid. And I believe that's true. With I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I completely, um, I completely uh, overlooked the second part of your question about, I thought you were talking about the program. Yes, the deaf mentors in the program are paid. Hey, thank you all. All right, I think that is a wrap. Um, I want to thank I want to thank everybody so much for being here. Um, our panelists, our interpreters. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, if anybody has any questions um, that you want to ask, you can pass them along to me, and I can send them to the appropriate person. Um, yeah, so thank you again, and. Um, we will hopefully see you all again soon. Have Thank a good you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Ariel.